Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of the Choker Bros. I'm your host, Samson A. Prime. And I'm Zach Burrell. Before we get started, we want to thank our sponsors, CarsVillies.com. Um, on our first take of the shot, we were both surprised that we were... Yeah, we did. It wasn't even planned, yeah. But uh, now we I'll already know. Spoilers. Anyway, <laughs> check out CarsVillies.com for your um, all your pre-orders, um, your your accessories, whether it's your, your play mats and your sleeves, most importantly, your singles. Uh, get your Noctis get, promos from those pre-order boxes. Get your Noctis promos. I'm getting a case, which is the first time I've ever gotten a case of any uh, TCG. I, I've played Magic for, I don't know, a long time. Maybe like 20 years. I never got a case of Magic. Um, so it says a lot about that I'm, I'm buying a case. And that doesn't include what I get from the sponsorship. Also, I'm just buying a case in addition. Uh, <laughs> that's just how much I want to foil out uh, Opus 7. Right? Because I, I yeah. do think it's going to be a sweet set. I didn't even finish falling out Opus 6. Very sad. Um, and even parts of 5, I think. I think I'm missing a few cards from 5. But Oof, that is not slacking. The, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not the point. Um, although I do want to tie into that a little bit because I'm, I'm sure uh, the subject of Opus 7 and, and the kind of the lull between events will be a topic to talk about. But besides that, we do want to thank James over at Cards of Ivalice. Uh Most important, I believe, uh, Zach, you said it was January 12th? January 12th, there will be the reunion event uh, hosted here in Orlando, in Florida, by Cards of Evilice. Right. So we will be there, Yep. of course. Yeah, I believe and... uh, Mr. Foils himself, uh, Max, will be uh, judging the set, set event, and he will be judging you if you do not bring <laughs> your foils. Um, <laughs> so, that so I do want to talk about the event a little bit, because... It is a special event. It is a, an, an event that RB uh, themselves is flying out for. Um, they will get here and run the All-Star Draft, is my understanding. Yep, um, which is Cube for anybody who does, still doesn't know what All-Star is, but comes from another game. Well, I it's think Cube. Cube is a more appropriate name anyway. I like cubing. Uh, but yeah. So they'll run the All-Star Draft, um, which is a, a draft of the most popular cards, and then you play those. Uh, I don't know how if they're, they're going to set up like a cube like we do, where it's a box, or if they just have packs of the most mm -hmm. popular cards. That would be interesting and expensive, maybe. But it's a cool idea. They, they could be reunion stamped, like yeah, Grand Prix. That, <laughs> that would be really cool. But so RB is flying in for this event. Is it an official Square uh, Enix sponsored event, which is super dope? Now on top of that, you have things like uh, a constructed tournament with a sweet trophy. Uh, sweet top eight play mats. Um, a lot of prizes are going to be given out. In addition, there's also Final Fantasy trivia. Uh, if you know anything about uh, the Lockwoods, they are uh, fanatics <laughs> about um, trivia, and they they uh, Cards of the Least even has a, a whole blog about Final Fantasy and Origins and all these great trivia. I can tell you that if you... He always least, has quotes that I don't know how he remembers. Right. So like, I don't know if, if he's got like a list or what. If you study his uh, his blogs, you might do well in this trivia. That would be my <laughs> guess. Um, and I'm sure there'll be some new stuff on there as well. That being said, um, all three of those events, whether it's the All-Star Draft, the Trivia, or the Constructed Tournament, are all firing at separate times. So you have a chance to do all three events. That's really cool. That being said, I believe the cutoff is 200 people, so you, you do want to pre-register for this. And the thing is, is that everyone says if they do this, this, and this, I would show up. I think that James has hit every single thing that you need to do in order... I'm assuming it's going to be streamed, right? That's the plan, yeah, for it to be streamed. It's planned to be streamed. Uh, we have judges, judging staff. We have multiple formats of play. Yep. Uh, we have a venue that fits 200 people. Yep. So, and I'll just say this. <laughs> I mean, it sounds exactly. good to me. I'll just say this, um, and this is just my honest take, and I don't think anyone should go by this, but it's just how I feel. I will probably... Evolve, it depends on the format. So, if the top eight is a timed at 70 minutes... I will probably try to help stream it or help Max judge it in some way. I'm not interested in playing in any more top cut events that are 70 minutes and less. And I know that's probably a hot take, um, but that includes if there was a Crystal Cup. Well, if there's a Crystal Cup in Tampa, I would volunteer to judge it or something along the lines. I don't 
and it's it's just a personal thing. It's not some sort of rebellion. I just don't think that I do well under pressure. I don't like that. I don't like asking my opponent to play faster. I don't like calling a judge. It puts me in an awkward situation. I don't like that uh, matches and competitive nature come down to that. I've, I've given this spiel a million times. Um, so that's the only thing that will stop me. I haven't talked to James as what it will be. The All-Star Draft is run by Square Enix. Um, so it's possible that they, they go by the official rules for that, and that's fine. I would definitely still like to help out because I think that this event is going to be really cool. And in the end... There, even though James has offered some really, really cool prizes, this event is not about the pricing, right? Like, it's about the community coming together, um, right? Really, for the first time ever, other than Nationals, uh, it's the first time that the community can come together with no restrictions, actually, ever, right? Because, like, right now you have the sushi tournaments, it's the only real community event that happens <laughs> on a monthly event, and that happens over in Cali, so the rest of us are really excluded from that. And then you have Nationals last year, which was anyone could go if you're the first 200 people. I guess that's yep. similar to this, but. Um, <laughs> kind of, yeah, actually. <laughs> yeah, now that I think about it. But and then you have Nationals this year where you had to earn an invite. I think the real difference here is that if you come to hang out with the community, you're not going to not be allowed in. You just, there's simply like you can't enter the tournament. You know, like they only have so well, also, space. Well, also, this is more. Like the other ones were competitive events. There were sure, nationals, yeah. there were crystal cups. You're trying to like you're on that it's not, you know, professional necessarily yet, but you're on that pro circuit kind of like you're trying to qualify and play the official, whatever. Sure. This is purely fun and community based. Right. And it tells a lot of, uh, about the community to see how much interest there is for this tournament. Right. Like there's is... there's no real stakes besides like just normal prizing for like right. a big event. And everyone like really wants to go and is saying like this is gonna be awesome. It's like it really should show something for Which the community. Which is one of the reasons I hope that they do ninety minute rounds. At the, I mean, I would love on time top eight, but ninety minutes at the very least. And we see that happening with the European. Uh, I say, how do you feel about that? Because they went to eighty, so not quite ninety, but no, I think they're at ninety for top. Oh, eight. is it only 80, 80 during Swiss, ninety 80 during, during top Swiss cut? or something like that? And then it's so weird. Yeah, and then ninety during top cut. Um, I think it is. I, I just don't understand why it's not normally that way. I just, yeah, I just baffled. Yeah, I was that was gonna bring that up if you didn't just now, but yeah. But uh, anyway, I don't want to like. It, it's weird that, that like I've... people qualifying for the same events are playing under different rules, right? Like yeah, yeah, they're right? they're that playing for happen. worlds invites and for stuff, and like for them to be playing a basically a different like meta game, like beyond I mean, the meta game, like your actual mental game. It seems very odd. Yeah, and then they get to play a two deck format, um, which is a little frustrating. Well, it's kind of like Josh Gutt qualified playing Opus 2 meta. Right, like, I guess a bunch what? of people who had just started playing too, to be fair, right? Yeah, exactly. Because so that, oh, Because in China, it was China, right? In China, it was in China, yeah. Um, the Opus that had just come out, Opus 3, no, was it Opus 2? Yeah, Opus 2 had just released. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they had just begun playing the game. And Josh traveled there, who had been playing for... Um, I believe Josh started playing last November or so, if I remember correctly. I'm not exactly sure, but I remember getting a message from him around then. Right, right. Um, so yeah, I, I I do think it's weird that so the world competitors qualify under different rules. I, I it it boggles my mind still a little bit. There's a lot of things that still boggle my mind. I mean, I think that they're trying. I think they're improving, and I always do want to see that growth in the game. But yeah, that part does frustrate me. Um. I do like the two deck format though. It's oh, kind of yeah. sweet. I, I a lot of people were complaining about it. I'm like, it seems awesome. I don't awesome. know how they feel about that, that because some people feel like you just bring a deck that, like, there's there's a strategy, and that is that you either bring Turbo Ice or you bring two decks that crush Turbo Ice. Well, okay, but that's that's a sin of the cards in the meta, not a sin of the format. Oh no, I agree. Like, so I, I don't I don't see I'm the saying, issue. I don't know if people complain about it. Well, because you have to factor in the meta when you think about it. Sure, I mean, I like if I, pro, I get if it's if not Pro completely. Tour, when the Pro Tour happens during in Magic, during uh, like the hail of like Rally, like <laughs> it's just not a fun Pro Tour or the hail of Jund. Yeah. Sure, I mean, I like these decks too, but not everybody does. No, I know. I was just kind of work the Rally. format in in a way that like like during Cobblade, you know, if you're not playing Cobblade, <laughs> you're an idiot. Um, not to mention, well, it's different because that deck was actually really fun to play. <laughs> Um, who doesn't like drawing cards? Putting swords on birds. Yeah, and putting <laughs> birds underneath. and Yeah, it's, it's sweet, right? Um, Jace was a heck of a card. Um, but anyway, so you have to take the format a little bit into consideration, which is, I think, fair. But anyway, that's that's all asides to the fact that I will uh, I'll be there no matter what. 
100%. Whether I'm playing or just helping James out with the event, like I want to be there in some capacity. Whether I'm streaming, maybe I'm streaming. Uh, I say I would like, almost consider not playing if you and I could do like commentary. I would do that if the if we do a six if we do seventy minute cut top. I will definitely consider streaming um, or just hanging out. Like I like James, I'd like to see him. I'd like to see RV. I'd like to hang out with um, if we can get some of the Cali people going. If we can get RVA boys coming in. If we can get Curtis coming in hot. Like all those yeah. people would be great. Seeing some of the Phoenix guys come down would be awesome. I mean, you have the time to arrange travel. You have the destination spot. You have Orlando. You have Disney World, uh, Sea World, Universal Studios, like all these places. Yeah, you have three months from like, well, tomorrow. Yeah, so <laughs> to, you have, like, you have plenty of time. of time. You have a place to stay because I'm sure there'll be a hotel nearby where everyone goes. You have the bearded collectible guys who I'm sure will host you. Um, they're big in the Orlando like, even, area. Even like you and I could probably. So that's, at least that's what I was saying. If, if you're willing to spend the 45 minute drive with us come Saturday morning or whatever, then you have us. And, and there is even a chance that I imagine that we get a hotel Saturday night uh, because we want to have a good time and hang out with the with everybody from the crew. And then we can spend Sunday with everybody in Orlando. I think that sounds like a blast. Uh, mm -hmm. And even if we don't, we can just drive back out there in the morning. It's really not that big of a deal. We can crash at your place. It's a 45-minute drive. It's not that big of a deal. So it sounds like fun. And I'm really, really excited about the tournament. I know we talked a lot about this tournament. Uh, <laughs> And I think uh, just real quick, uh, yeah. I was just going to clarify. So the European rules, it's 80 minutes day one, 90 minutes day two. Sure. All right. So, and, so, then, so just and then 120 minute grand arbit final. Arbitrary numbers. Yes. And right? then 120 for the grand final. Like 80 minutes day one, but uh, the better players will need more time day two. <laughs> to get, yeah, yeah. Wait. Wait. Those players were playing day one, two. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> I, know you, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about spoilers. Uh, uh, we can either do that, or yeah. um, if you guys still care about my national stuff. <laughs> it's up to you. What do you, what do you want to go with? Um, I can talk a little bit about nationals real quick. Sure, um, I mean, you guys covered all the great stuff. I'm not going to sit here and just repeat. You know, community was awesome. The event was awesome. Uh, we had that fun little, you know, the side room where we were grinding out testing. We got to meet everybody. Everyone was great. I agree with all the things you guys said. Um, you guys talked a lot about the turbo deck because uh, that was kind of the talk of nationals, right? Like it won the event. It was kind of the boogeyman going in. Like everybody knew it was going to um, be one of the, wait, what's your, sorry. I, yeah. All right. Just go, go ahead. We'll talk about it in a second. Okay. <laughs> I haven't looked at the spoilers yet. I have not looked at the spoilers yet. My mind is, was just blown. All right. Well, we'll talk about those in a sec. Anyway. So I played turbo, right? And it was a decision source. and it was a decision that I made technically I had made it about a week prior, but I was well, well we weren't one hundred percent sure, right? Wasn't hundred percent. I was between Earthwind in some capacity or Turbo. We're kinda of like my two choices. Um I could have been convinced to play your deck, but I just didn't I didn't feel comfortable on it. And we also didn't have two copies of the deck. Sure, yeah. But uh I mean we could have scrambled it together, but that's a whole lot of stress. Anyway, um I played we we jammed games. And like you said, you, we were winning and winning and winning with it. Probably 80% of our games. And that was after people knew what I was playing. That was with counters in their deck. That was with Dotalumas or whatever. And yeah. it felt so strong I had to play it. Because uh, I thought it would give me the best chance. Um, I had a couple misplays too. and mistakes I made during the day. Um, I could have made day two if I paid a little more attention. Yeah, sure. And went could've a little slower. Could have gone to Worlds. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, the, the opponent you made the mistakes to is going to Worlds. That's true. Uh, one of them, yeah. Actually, both of them. Nice. Good job, man. Yep, lost to Chris Neal around three because I didn't kill his snow when with Umaro when I, and I chose to attack instead. And I would have won two turns later. Um, and then against David Cox, we had a really weird stack resolving that uh, we he talked about in his article. Go check that out on Metapotion. Um, yeah, that was unfortunate. But, I mean, it's my fault, too. Like, it's two people, it takes two to tango in that kind of situation. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, excellent time though. Uh, the deck, I agree with a lot of the criticisms for it. Uh, I think probably the best solution, just to kind of skip past all your guys' discussion last week, if you guys want to hear more talk about that, check out our podcast from last week with Jordan Dank. Uh, I think the best solution would be a rotting to if you discard, then they discard, because that takes out sure. a large part of the card. Um that prevents abusing the stack with it, which is part of the skill intensive part of the deck, 
where you play a three CP thing, search, and then you know make them discard, find your card. That's how it accrues advantage, and it doesn't hurt itself, right? Yeah. So I think having that errata would probably be the best solution if there was a solution needed. But anyway, I don't want to beat the turbo discussion into the ground again. I think we've done that. Yeah. What did you just see where your mind got blown? So I haven't been watching the spoilers. Um, I mean, I wonder if this is going to be on my list of things to look oh, out for. It has to be. It has. To. It absolutely has to be. In fact, I, it's probably number one. Uh, um, well, there's a few I left off because I thought it, it's too cute for me, so I'm like, I'm not uh, going to talk about if it. If it's my favorite card, then it should be your number one spot uh, on your list. Ooh, okay, um, let's see. It's going to be one of two cards. Okay. So, um, I don't follow the spoilers. I usually do. Opus 7 just hasn't... I think I'm a little salty about Worlds, so Opus 7 hasn't really struck my interest because I think by the time I play an event, it'll be Opus 8, if I'm not if I'm not correct. Um, by the time I play the, an event that the, matters, it'll be Opus 8. Okay, I'll say the reunion technically will be, be Opus 8. Which will be awesome, but I'm just playing that for fun. I'm not... Like, right. the prizes are cool, but I'm just going for the community. And, right. And if you're going to win, great. I think that's cool. I'm sure the trophy's going to be amazing. I, I kind of know what it is, um, but I'm not going to tell anyone. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I'm just going to have fun. So that, that won't bother me. Um, but the next time I get to play in an event that matters will be... Opus 8. Like, there's not even fun things like Petite Cups. Right. Um, which I wish there was. Anyway, I'm not even going to go on this, that, that subject. Um, I wish that those were things. But, so I just haven't been that interested, so I haven't been following. People have pointed out some cards, like the Fire Monster, which is pretty cool. The Jack, which is pretty cool. Yuna. Um, <laughs> Yuna's pretty cool. Yuri's pretty cool. The, um... Sin, obviously, people Sin have talked about a lot. Favorite. Sin was probably my favorite card until I saw it. Flan. Yeah, Flan too. It's just going to make ice better. It is actually good in ice. It's probably even better in like uh, Matiski's style of ice. Um, yeah, all those cards are pretty good. Uh, Noctis is pretty good if you want to handle <laughs> with uh, Turbo some more. But you already have Cecil. He, he doesn't really do anything that Noctis isn't already going to do. Oh, Noxus yeah, has to take the damage too, so it's like it well, can kill bigger things. The exception but... is that this can kill Sarah. Is the only right. real thing it can do without trading into it. Like it can't kill yeah. Genesis without trading into it. Um, Unless you have backups to it, like Maria kind of thing. But which makes sense. Are you do like, have that on the field against Turbo? If you've played, if you've played fifteen, when you use the the legendary weapons, I forget what they're called. Uh, the Royal Arms, I think, is what they're called. They they take health away from you, so it's almost like that. It's very flavor win to me that like. When he hits guys, they also um, he also loses health. Um, mm -hmm. which that's, that's what happens with the Royal Arms. Um, but the first, I saw Seymour, and I said, oh, I really like him in Lightning. Let me mm -hmm. see what he does. Have you read what he does? Oh, he's fantastic. He's on my list of, yeah. When he enters the field, search for one summon and place it on top of your deck. Yeah. What? Yeah, Fusoya Odin. Yeah. Yeah, it's also an EX burst. Yeah. Wait, and then it also has a special? That Real reveals top a top card if it's a summon, cast for free. And it does not require a dull, so you can play this onto the field, stack your deck, and immediately special. You can also ephemeral summoner in the same deck. Like, how are we not just playing a Fasoya deck day one? I mean, for me, it'll be like Opus 8 before I really play. But, <laughs> but <laughs> man, I'm going to keep burning myself on that one. Um, but how are you not just like... My mind is just blown. How? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I see. I thought you already this saw is, that, so that wasn't a, what I thought you were gonna look at. But yeah, I know that was a card you would like. Is a backup or a monster? It's a backup. There's no way it's a backup. It's a two CP lightning backup. Yeah. Just with an EX burst and a special. Because <laughs> it has an EX burst, has an awesome ability, and it has a special, and you can still dole it for CP. Like what? Like at least make it a monster you, where you can, you can like, actually dole it for CP. It. You can dole it for CP to pay its own special cost. Right, it just doesn't make any sense <laughs> like, whatsoever. What, there's a Lightning Emperor? When it enters the field, choose two forge opponent controls, dull them. Oh, I think they spoiled that a while ago, right? Yeah, that was a while ago. Oh, okay, well, I just didn't remember it. Anyway, some of my spoilers that I think are going to be fantastic. Um, everyone's seen the Ject, right? Yeah. The 5 CP Legend, it, it costs one if you have four or more damage, or I think it's four or more damage, five or more damage. Yeah. I have, I have it right here, I can just read it. Five or more. Four or more. Okay, there you go. Um, and then, but if you have, and when it enters, if you have two points of damage more 
then your opponent deal them a point of damage. So it's going to be excellent in these kind of like uh, more controlly style decks. If you're playing an aggressive fire deck, there's better 5 CP forwards. But if you're playing any sort of slower, grindier deck, I think that card's excellent. Why does Saws cost 4? Why can't Fire have one good... I guess it has Selfie. <laughs> but even Selfie only gets Zell, right? I think that's the literal only target for it. Um, I can get the other Selfie. No, I think it's no, forward. It I don't know. No, yeah. It can only get... <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it can only get... Why does this card cost 4? I just don't understand. <laughs> Um, Yuna, I think, is going to be great, because uh, you've pointed out where you can now play wind decks that don't necessarily get stuck with water and play Valfor. Right, you can play Valfor. So that's going to be sweet. And she's like a 2-cost 6k, which is already a pretty good rate. I mean, that's like online with a lot of the bigger uh, Earth 2CPs, like Seraphie, uh, Skarmig, stuff like that. So what I think that's pretty Prish? sweet. Isn't Prish very good? Prish is on my list for cards I think are going to improve. Like, just the Prish package. Like, that yeah. card's insane. I mean, like, I want to start playing title where now that they have a new Prish, like... Well, because, yeah, I mean, the more, the later the game goes, the less this thing costs. It It's going to kill something on entry. Like, 9k is a lot, and you're probably playing Enacro in this crazy Earth Forwards Matter deck. Yeah. And you can play it for free when your 6 cost dies. And use it for the special for the 6 cost. I think that card's amazing. Okay. At least for like the environment it'd be played in. How about this dark card, Galdis? Card's sweet. So it um, when it's put from the field, it's a three CP eight K. When it's put from the field in the break zone, it's like one of the three you put it randomly discards. It's, could be pretty good. It just depends. You know there's an ice backup that goes with it, right? A two CP? Choose I will look at it. Choose one monster in your break zone, add it to your hand. That could be very good. That's sweet. Yep. You choose one for it, it loses five thousand power. That is could be good if you're playing this in some sort of lightning build or something. Like I think that. there's always something relevant here, as long as you build your deck with the monsters. Because, like, Correct, right? worst case, so you get a monster back. Best, best case, they have one card left they've been holding on to or something, and you, you get rid of it. 3 CP for an AK. So. Yeah, exactly. And then if you're playing Ice, you can play its 2-drop backup, which gives it 1k power. And also, when that uh, 2 CP backup enters the field, uh, your opponent selects a forward and dulls and freezes it. Like, that's pretty good <laughs> so and there's also a four that leviathans if you spend only water yep there's, there's a lot of interesting uh cp matters cards that like it cares about what you put into it i'm really excited about x death is one of my favorite cards which is the one where uh when it enters the field you take any four from a break zone yep reanimate to the backups you control and then put it or or less and put into play. I like that card. I, I'm I'm a big fan of like unburial rights and uh, reanimate for the older formats. Look at the card right next to it though, Argy, the two drop backup. Uh, think about it with a Lulu H deck and its last ability. So when it goes from the field to the break zone, you get one of three: either activate it forward, haste it forward, or get a one drop backup back. So you can play it with like the uh, lightning summoners, and you can just constantly have fodder for your Lulu H chucks. Yeah, and isn't there a one CP water forward or backup? Yep, Yagarosh. Right. So Yagarosh, when he enters, you choose a backup other than him and bounce it. So I see, I see a, a reoccurring style of so like MTG deck that I tend to like happening here. Yeah, like the, and like uh, Yagarosh with Mion seems just absolutely bonkers. Like, and you can search Yagarosh with Sid too, which I think is gonna be another improved card, like even better than he already is. Because yeah. you can just go get Yagarosh, bounce, you can play with Mion, it's all in those colors, and you're just drawing a ton of cards. Yeah. Um, getting rid of it's a little bit of an issue in those colors, but I think you could do something does, with it. Does the Goblin Monster in make Sid Reigns better, I wonder? Uh, I mean, yeah, that's pretty good. Kill 7k dull yeah. thing, and they discard. And they yeah, so the Ice Goblin is a card I really like, so you can just sacrifice it once it's on the field and find any monster in your deck put in your hand. Now, like I could see that making Ozma a lot more relevant. People are really polar on snow. Um, <clears throat> like, they either think it sucks or they think it's amazing. I think I'm somewhere leaning towards amazing, but nowhere but nowhere near like it's amazing. Like, I think it's like a 7.9 or something like that, like almost an 8. Like, the cards could be very, very good and end the game on its own. Like I think it's very good that it's named Snow. I think it's good that it's named Snow, so you can't have one CP Snow dulling two things. Well, maybe you don't need it. You already have two monsters that attack. Think of it with uh, Light Vaughn, too. Just get rid of three blockers. Right. Dull two and one can't block. I mean, like, I don't know, man. When are you going to have three blockers? Like, aren't you, aren't you <laughs> playing real decks with, like, Shenmue? Heck. 
Yeah, but I guess like, so. <laughs> Lions have three blockers. <laughs> and like, if uh, anyone has three blockers against me, I'm not trying to attack them anyway, so I'm not... Whatever. Like, then kind of a combination of cards I think are going to get better along with cards I think are going to be good are the forward monsters. So we know we're going to get the fire one, at least we expect to, the one that searches for Ifrit, because there's three in the game. Um, the it's a two CP. There's an ice, a fire, and a er, no, lightning, lightning. Yep. That searches Shiva, Ram, or Ifrit. So basically, whichever color it is when it dies. But it's a monster in all situations. So that means in your hand, in your deck, in your break zone. So like Gao can get them back. Uh, Golbez break could go get them, and then when they die, you go find a summon. Um, I like them too with uh, Kefka L. So you can break them to play him, kill something, and go tutor a bunch of summons to refill your hand after your Ke Kefka and continue just, you know, you didn't the, lose a lot of new, card advantage. The new uh, Fire Monster could be pretty good with Kefka L too, if you have some other 8 drops in the deck. I don't know what 8 drops are good enough, but it is a way to get, like, Sephiroth out of your hand, for example. The the Fire Monster uh, which, which one? is Neath. When it enters the field, you discard one card from your hand. And then you search for a four with cost equal Oh, backup. Card. Okay, sorry. I thought yeah. you said monster. Oh, yeah, I just said monster. I mean backup. Sorry. So, like, that could be pretty good. I think Meath is going to be sweet with uh, a shadow deck. So, a deck where you're playing these high costed dark cards yeah, for, I like. Think I actually a, thought it was a monster, and that's why I mentioned it. But no, it is a backup. Good point. A tutor package, and then. Uh, but you can also just discard it to go get things or yeah. whatever. And then they have the new Shiva, uh, which is really interesting. Um, it's kind of like a Jill, but Jill actually has value if you play it i don't see playing shiva unless i'm playing a shiva ex burst deck which mm -hmm. i don't know that that could be a thing but it could be i don't know um yeah so it's it's a weird card yeah um i'm somewhere between thinking it's amazing and thinking it's like just average <laughs> i don't really know how i feel completely because yeah it is just like a uh a jill off of ex which is great but it, right. when you're casting it from hand like Oh, yeah, I don't know. Or oh, I'm sorry, no. If it's EX, it dulls and freezes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the opposite. It's the opposite. Um, yeah, I mean, freezing's decent. Uh, it's just you have to... They have to already be attacking you if you just took damage, presumably, so, so too. Talk, talk to me about the back attack backup. Like, what do you think about that? So, I like the idea of it. Um, the idea that your opponent's doing calculations on their turn and setting up, uh, looking at your board state and doing math that way. And then at the end of the turn, you just like smack down on the backup and just kind of throws them off a little. But I don't know that it being vanilla besides the back attack, if I want to be clogging my backup slot with that. I think absolutely not, but it is, it is interesting. Um, it's definitely interesting. I could maybe see it in some kind of like deck where you want to be breaking your backups, whether it be Lulu H or like maybe some kind of weird, um, like a Furion fodder. But then, yeah. but Earth isn't really an element you typically see with Furion, yeah. so. Now, this Shantoto, um... So these effects in Magic are horrible. They are horrible. But in this like, game... Color fixing is kind of important in this game, I, I would say. Because you can discard those other cards to make mana, so, or to make, to play your cards. So in Magic, you can't really splash, like, these types of lands, like, um... I forget what the original ones were called. They had like the school, I forget what it is. Um, but anyway, they, they did these things where they you could dole two, you could pay two to pay one to get one, for example. I mean, this one is just much cheaper than that. It's pay one to get one. Well, no, because you have to dole itself too, right? Yeah, Maybe. so you have to pay one to turn it and then you one to use it for whatever that color is. So it takes essentially you only have four backups, but they but you can do any color. So there's a trade-off, but like right. I could see, see it still being you splash these other fine. colors in this deck. Uh, whereas in Magic, you couldn't do anything with those cards. Where in this deck, you could at least discard them for CP, generic CP. Right, right. I mean, if if in Magic you drew a card that you couldn't play, you could just discard it for generic mana, like for colorless mana. <laughs> uh, I think it, it's kind of along this like this sets a lot about splash colors and CP combinations. Like this Krill seems amazing. Like, uh, your summons can be paid with any element. Um, and then whenever you cast one, uh, something gets bigger. You can discard a summon to make her unable to be targeted by abilities. Uh, but, like, that first ability, and she's a warrior of light, which can be kind of relevant. Yeah. But um, the idea that you can play a deck... Could fit, just... I don't think you could fit any summons in your warrior of light deck. <laughs> um... Well, sure. I mean, maybe not. I mean, you can fit some, but like you're you're already adding, you're already cutting some number of warrior lights 
you know, but would you just cut things like Leviathan to play better summons that are in any color because you have that card? No, because you're not. There's no guarantee you draw <laughs> this card, and then you still have to make cuts to play this card. True. So we there's a lot of warrior light support that. here, though. Um, so I don't know if the CP so cost matters. Let's but. let's talk enough about spoilers. Let's kind of talk about what what cards you think are going to improve based off of these spoilers. I know you'd come up with a list, right? Yeah. Sorry, I said a couple of them. I said Prish, okay, uh, Sid two. Prish? Oh, was I supposed to number them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I number them. Just give me your five. So, so Sid so 2 Prish, we have things like Yogg, right? And we have the other one that can balance things. We have a lot of really good synergies with Sid 2. So uh, Schrodinger, Gao, Kafka, L is kind of like the package of things sure. that go well with these two CP monsters. Yeah, uh, monster right. forwards. Um, Flan. Uh, because of the new Flan. Sure. I think that... Wow. I'm really disappointed that you did not say Fasoya. Oh, is already great. You can't have you improve. Read this, have you read the Seymour? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. And, and the Noctis? I'm, I'm getting there the fifth card on the list. Is it, is it it's Fusoya? not Fusoya, but it's because of Fusoya. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think ephemeral, so I think being able to tutor up Earth CP in an ice deck, uh, there was if you look at the meta from Nationals, there were a ton of Earth ice lists. And I think a lot of them would have liked an effect like this, where they could go less on the Earth package and just keep their walls and their Shantotos and like their good Earth cards. And just have so Flan to search like it out when they need it. Deck, yeah, and just search this out when they need it. Sure. Like, it seems very good. And the card's not, like, awful, right? Like, it's kind of a bigger Flan it once, or you can just, like, randomly plus 1k something no, if it's, it's in your not, hand. It's certainly not awful. It's certainly playable. Um, it's certainly playable, uh, like, Giant Growth is playable. I guess. <laughs> very, very, very specific time and situation. So, this, the, the last card on my list is because of Fasoya. It's because of Ject. It's because of all these kind of like damage matters effects coming out. Uh, Saz, the two CP forward, I think well, we could see a lot more play. Yeah. What? We just got a backup Saz. Yeah, but I want the forward Saz because the backup Saz is mediocre. <laughs> I think it's good, actually. Oh no, it's like, good, I but it's just it's not expensive. great. Yeah. Well, it's two CP in the same way that. Well, but no, I think. It's, well, it's. The EX part, I think, is relevant. I know we had a discussion in the uh, Octagon chat um, that people don't really think EX versus adds much to the card. And I know that I am a loner on the fence on that. But I think that, like, Saws have an EX burst could actually make a C play. I don't think it'll C play. But if it does mm -hmm. C play, it's because it has EX burst. I really do believe that. Because yeah. the card's just not playable outside. I mean, look at a card like Ton <clears throat> Betty. Like, Ton Betty would not C play without EX burst. I don't uh, think Jill Nabot would see nearly as much play if it wasn't the Ron X burst. Would not see play without the X burst. So, and Vikings insane, but I don't think that Braun would see play without the X burst. Look at Leviathan for the longest time. Leviathan. Some people are still in their decks are playing Opus One Leviathan over Opus Six Leviathan. What world does that make sense in? <laughs> like Opus Six Leviathan. In the X world, that's the only that's the only thing it has over is but the it's X burst. Relevant, right? Like. There are many, many, many games I would have won without EX Burst. There are many games I did win because of EX Burst. It is really relevant. For people to kind of discount it, like, oh, well, you can't bank on luck. Well, well bro, I built my but you deck can't, based you, off this. You can bank on being lucky some of the time. Right. I built my deck with saws in it. You, you can sure bet that if I have 17 EX Bursts in my deck, that I'm going to hit one at some point. At You know, mathematically, yeah. I'll hit one at least. Um, and if that summon goes and gets me a Bahamut, great. If it right. goes and gets me a Belias, so I can be able to give you a haste you during your turn, where well, you didn't think I was going to be able to, great. Not again. I'm not saying Saz will see play. I just think that it's a consideration that it could see play, given that it's yeah. in the best element. <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. No. So I think uh, the two CP Saz could be kind of good with like the whole ject idea ject fusoya that kind of thing there i think well, there's gonna be some kind of control deck there i know people don't love lulu h but i think lulu h could get better with cards like seymour oh um, she's fantastic uh, ex death people are crazy card. if they say she's not great yeah uh the, we just live in a world of turbo and hecaton chair right now which was why we didn't play the earth lightning well it's not the only reason but Certainly yeah. was a consideration. Yeah. I, I also like the new Lulu backup, though. The one that uh, you break one of your backups when she enters in 7k something. 
That's the red one. I just wish it was. I just wish it had any other name so you could play it with Lulu H. Yeah. But then that might be maybe too good. I don't know. Break yeah. your Fusoya, kill something, I chuck it. How good it is in title, um, which is something we should cover real quick before we wrap up. Um, we have been experimenting with title here locally. Uh, Zach wasn't able to make it to our first title tournament, but uh, so but I can just kind of fill you guys in. Um, every single person was obsessed with title that day. We loved it. We ate it up. <laughs> it was amazing. We decided we were never running another tournament without title. So going forward locally, we have a new type of tournament that we're trying out. Um, now, when Cool Stuff has its big events, um, such as like their window boxes and stuff, well, those are like official Cool Stuff events. We can't do anything about those. Those are going to be constructed as usual. But we really run the show as far as uh, Friday night events and Sunday. We really – like those are days that we set up to play at Cool Stuff and at Sunshine. Those are days that we decide we will play. Those are times where we decide that we want to play. We just show up in, in droves. We had 14 last time. Uh, we're just showing up. We're making these games happen. And they're happy to take our money and run our tournament. Uh, so we de de define the rules. So we have switched rules when we decide to go to best of three format um for the top cut uh i don't remember any of the other rules we decided to go into the double loss format because they were doing draws for a while yeah uh, we've kind of set those rules the the new rule that we're that we've been discussing is that every match is constructed format except both players can agree to play title uh um, which is really cool uh if one person says i want to play constructed and the other person says i want to play title then you play constructed no arguing is the way it is it has to be unanimous. They both play. decide they want to play title. And then you get to play title. Now, it's a win-win for everyone because if you show up without a title deck, well, you can still get to play the tournament, which we had happen. We had... Uh, I forget how many players we had. We had a lot on Sunday. We had a lot for Sunday. But one of the guys hadn't played in months. and He didn't just check Facebook and he didn't know. And then we had Jamal who didn't show up with a title deck. Uh, luckily, I had an extra Final Fantasy IX deck that Jamal loved. He did very well with the deck. Um... He made some misplays, otherwise he probably would have gone undefeated. Uh, but he liked it, he played it, whereas the other guy... Decided it was okay. He, he wanted to play Constructed. What now? I said, but it was okay. Oh. <laughs> so he, he wanted to play um, Constructed because he didn't have a title deck, uh, which was fine. So he got paired up against me round one. I didn't bring a Constructed deck. I brought up Serena's. I played Turbo Ice. I crushed him on like turn four. It wasn't fun. Um, <laughs> he decided Constructed wasn't for him, and then he opened his binders and he built a title deck. <laughs> That's how that went. But the point was is that you get to play the format that you enjoy the most. I normally enjoy Constructed the most. I think that um, Ice is cancerous and terrible, and right now it makes me really enjoy title. So hey, Mono Ice did something great, guys. It exposed the world to title. It's not just <laughs> myself who's playing title. It's not just Tampa who's playing title. If you're paying attention to FFTCG fans page or the US page or probably any other page, title is quite the rage right now. Um, everyone's talking about it. Um, I have, I don't know where my decks are, but I have uh, 14 built. I have 12 built, which is the one I've been playing. I have you can technically have them all built, right? You just need actually built. Yeah. But the ones I have actually built are seven. Um, that I said 14. I have 11. Uh, I'm trying to go in order, which I've been playing them. Two, six, four. Maybe that's all I have. I don't have eight and thirteen. Those are both decks that I want to build because um, I have cool ideas for them. Uh, but anyway, the point is, I have a ton of title decks. Never have my binders been so empty. And <laughs> you can build all these decks, and they don't overlap cards. Now, I guess you could build two different. Oh, I have ten as well. Um, so you oh, except have, for the evokers and stuff, you just have to have some extras. But I have tons of evokers. Yeah, tons and tons and tons and tons. And tons. Oh yeah, because from the cube. Right, and and I actually don't have any decks that have evokers in them besides seven has two earth and one fire. Um, I'm assuming your two deck has, does. Ten might have one water evoker because I want to be quick, and two has six evokers uh, or seven evokers. Because so, sin two. So you, yeah, exactly. So you don't even actually have to overlap. Um, so yeah, you don't have to overlap. Uh, I don't think I'm playing any summoners. <laughs> Funny enough. Um, nor ha don't do I think I've ever registered a summoner in a tournament. I always run the water 
the wind or the earth version. Um, <laughs> and like I said, the fire version also has one red fire poker. So anyway, so that's been really cool. Uh, the format is way more um, back and forth. You always feel like you're both winning and losing in title. Um, like I've never, I haven't played a game, I think, where I thought that I was always winning or always losing, which is very different than construction. When I'm playing construction, I always feel pretty firmly ahead. And I know when I'm behind. Uh, but title, just everything could change the corner at any point. Like it's very hard to predict, even if you know all the cards. Uh, like if you're playing 12, like you have no idea when the Vaughn special is going to come. There's so many Vaughns and the Vaughn special is very good. Um, and it just has ways to untap things. And if you're playing 10, like at any point, they could drop the combination of the goal wings. And then you're just locked out of the game if you're not playing careful enough. Uh, you know, seven, you're playing against six um, and their forwards are just very efficient. Their backups, meh, but their, their forwards are just very efficient. Um, you're playing against four and you literally have like 15 different decks. You can be playing against Palin and Porum. You can be with some Tersoya nonsense, some Mono Cecil Rosa getting every form of Cecil <laughs> nonsense. Um, Alfred? Except, Is that what Alfred's playing? He was playing both. He played Cecil and Fasoya. Um, and I think maybe the four drop Porum, if I remember right. Anyway, um, you, you, you play all of these different combinations in that uh, category. In fact, maybe there's not a category as universal, in my opinion, as four. There's like, mm -hmm. oh, you could play, be playing the Golbez Arshfiends. Like, um, yeah, you know. Because six drop goes and finds two of them, and then. Yeah. Right, and, and like you could just include all the other arch fiends anyway. So title has been really excellent and something that's been growing. I wouldn't be surprised if we added title to the events um, for the reunion. I wouldn't be surprised either if James is already locked in and doesn't want to do that, which is understandable. But title's been great, and there's not a lot of pressure. Uh, we're just having a good time. Like even here, like we don't have time top eight is one of the things like they technically have a time and we just tell them when we're done like if they call time we just <laughs> keep playing you know until like we've reached a, a conclusion the difference usually being that if there's a match that's taking a very long time like let's say we're at like best of three top cut and well let's just say let's just say that we're playing in swiss so we're not doing and we've reached like you know normal 30 minutes we've reached like 45 minutes we'll usually be like all right that's time and round you know like all right that's way too long uh, that doesn't barely ever happen, but sometimes that sort of thing can happen if someone went to the bathroom or someone has some issues like sleeping up. So there's no pressure in that, which I've been having a lot of fun with. Um, so locals, I've been having fun. I really thought I was going to be more discouraged uh, about playing, and uh, but but I'm still not that interested in Opus Seven. I do think that, and that's one of the cool things about exciting cards, right? I think that possibly Seymour has my interest. Let's see what we can do. Um, and Sin. Not in the same deck, but <laughs> never say never. Um, I don't know what it's like for you, Zach. What is it? What is it like for you? Because I know that the the lull in events has got to be killing, killing it for a lot of us, right? I mean, yeah, it's not a whole lot to work towards, but like I am fine brewing and playing things that like in between. So I'm not as kind of down about it. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna really be, well. Not a big title fan, but we'll see how that plays I think out. You, I think maybe, you will be. maybe I can be convinced that it's not just broken. Like every deck, or well, there's like two decks that seem busted, and the rest. But you've only played sucked. two decks. <laughs> well, no, I'm saying twelve and uh, ten seem just un like. How do you deal with them? Like I don't understand. <laughs> okay. I'll give you. I'll give you an example. So twelve, right? You feel that way because in the games you played, in the games you've watched. Uh, it didn't. Feel, it felt very one-sided, right? Well, it's because of the hex proof, right? Those are the two that have a lot of things that can't be targeted, and that in a, in a well, format where you cannot diversify your deck enough time. with summon options and abilities, like only Ball Theory out, can't maybe. be targeted, though. No, you have your Fron, which makes your Vons untargetable. No, you have your Ball Theory that can't be targeted. Only makes you... Or Ball Theory? Yes, and your Ball Theory also, if you're talking about the four drop Legend, also has an ability where it can't be targeted. I feel like there was one I couldn't target your Vons. Right, but here, here's my point in the kind of thing. You were playing Final Fantasy VII against it, right? And uh, I've played that matchup a lot. I felt like it was pretty 50-50. But more recently in my games, I've lost the games. And in fact, I lost to Seven in our first title tournament to my wife playing with Seven. Um, well, she probably found backups. <laughs> no. no, she played no. turn one Vincent um, and then just saved her. 
uh, CP to death penalty whenever I started to try to build a board. She just death penalty me every time. Uh, eventually, mm-hmm. she found Yuffie, and so she was able to attack and death penalty me. And it was very frustrating. I still had fun playing, but it was frustrating that I couldn't deal with Vincent. I tried so hard. Um, but, and then she went on to beat 10 in that tournament. She beat um, 12, which I was playing. She beat At 10, two. I don't know how you beat 10. She 10 beat was... Two, just by being aggressive. Because I was watching uh, Alejandro play at Nationals, and oh my god. Like, you drop goings, and you literally can't deal with the deck. Like, it was uh, insane. Well, and then, it, like, you have the... Uh... It is definitely top tier, right? It's for sure. And you have Valfort on tap everything, and it was. And if you get a six, sticky situation, you have Valfort to bounce everything. Um, <clears> if that's the type of deck you're running, and it's going to get better right. with the new Yuna, I'm sure. Kamari's a bonkers for it. Right, and they'd also got a new Kamari. Yeah, right? Well, that's what I mean. The, that uh, Kamari, the new Kamari plus uh, Titus, like they neither of them can be targeted now. Right. It, it could get Sin. Um, yeah, it gets Sin. Like, oh, like, I'm, I'm not. I don't have my good setup. Build, but... Oh, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting play. I don't see this ever happening, right? But let's say you're playing against um, uh, you're playing against like Ritz, right? And you're just like Valfour, bounce my guys, play Sin. <laughs> Says none of their guys bounce. How nuts would that be? I don't. Although tactics play. advanced too, I heard was pretty busted too. I haven't seen it yet though. Sure. I know yeah. Kageyama was destroying people with it. Yeah, uh, Serena destroyed it with seven. Mm-hmm. She played against James, and it had a lot of haste and. He just got very frustrated. He said, I don't know how any deck deals with seven. It's just so infuriating. And the thing was, is that it is a good deck. Seven's a good deck. There's a reason Jesse's banned. Like, Cloud, the heroic light cloud is just nuts. The The heroic uh, fire cloud is also very good. Um, the the starter cloud is nuts. Wait, which, which one? The heroic fire one? The brave one that taps. That's a common. Cloud. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Your card's yeah. common. <laughs> well, it feels a lot like a heroic. Card. Oh, yeah, it does for sure. Yeah, in fact, that might be the single most dumbest rarity they've ever put on a card that I can think of. Like, even in Constructed, when I play against that card, it feels like a at least a rare. In Constructed, it's less powerful, but what is it, right? Um, right. So, yeah. So, I, I am enjoying Title. I think that you'll enjoy it. Um, maybe. I, I guess maybe... There's a piece of my brain in the back that's like, I can't play the cards I want to play because they're not yeah. good enough. And maybe that's why, and I'm just not playing the good cards. But, yeah. All right, like, so I just see, I see Strongest Sword Gilgamesh, and I'm like, ha, I must play this deck. And there's it's no just, Gilgamesh so far. Yeah. Anyway. All right, to wrap this podcast up, um, I just want to say uh, Opus 7 seems dope. Uh, I probably won't be playing that much Opus 7, <laughs> but it does seem really cool. Um, there are some cool cards. Uh, check out this reunion tournament, um, which is going to be insane. Um, I cannot wait. If you guys have any uh, magic friends who are interested in playing Final Fantasy, check out Zach's article. He wrote a blog uh, about um, the transition and also the similarities. And I think it makes for a great point for the benefits of Final Fantasy without overdoing it and without trying to oversell it. Um, so if you know, we can we can link to that. Uh, check that out. Um, Share it in your local magic group. Share it in your local Final Fantasy groups. <laughs> Spread the word. Uh, we've been doing a real push here in, in Tampa. And I even called for a bigger push this next coming week. But to grow. And I think Zach's article probably helped a little bit. And, and people just seeing us play helped a little bit. We've we've been hitting, we've had like three or four new people just in the last two weeks. Which is a lot of new people for Final Fantasy in a short amount of time. We will have new players um, tomorrow as well we'll have at least a couple new ones uh we're gonna do something really interesting for next week's podcast hopefully if everything works out the goal is to have my buddy jeremy who has never played final fantasy um he's gonna play tomorrow and then he's gonna join the podcast and kind of share his thoughts on it jeremy comes from a long uh background of tcgs he played a lot of competitive magic uh and he played a whole lot of competitive verses so shout outs to all you versus guys you might even know jeremy he played a lot in the orlando area uh, he's a tampa native um, but you know, there w- but wasn't a big scene here. So he drove all the way out to Orlando, like every weekend and played some verses. Um, so we should have him on the podcast next week. Hopefully Cody will be able to join us next week. Um, and that being said, one last thing, a special shout out again to our sponsors, Cards of Evilies, who is the big, you know, they're, they're not just the sponsor, although they are partnering with Square Enix, but they are the big reason that this reunion is happening. 
uh, if you want to see things like this happen and you say if this would happen I would come if they would happen this would come like sort of you know miracle you know if, if they build it they will come like, like James has built that he put this together so I hope to see you guys in January whether you're crashing on my floor whether you guys want to get uh, 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 you guys want to do a whole bunch of air mattresses we'll just fill up my entire <laughs> apartment or Zach's entire apartment or, or if we want to all rent a hotel together I'd be down for that too whatever we go camping sure. I'm sure there's, there's people there's places <laughs> in orlando we could go camping and it'd be probably be perfect weather to go camping in florida in january um so yeah anyway thank you guys for watching uh thank you uh james for everything you do um and uh this has been another episode of the choker bros i'm sam Snipe prime and i'm zach bro we'll catch you guys later